Hi, this is Bill Olet, and I'm here with Miro Kazakoff, and we're going to talk about how to choose a beachhead market. Miro Kazakoff and Tom Rose, the real Tom Rose, started a company called Tested when they were at uh, MIT. They were both students at the MIT Sloan School of Management, and they graduated in 2011, but in 2010, uh, Miro and Tom started a started Testive. Can you tell us a little bit about Testive, yep, so and, Testive. We're, and the journey? Yep. So Testive is a blended learning company. What we help is we combine really, really great teachers and really great technology to help deliver private education, one-on-one -on -one learning to people at much lower cost than had ever been possible. Mm -hmm. That's very exciting. So you're in the whole ed tech space, yep. and that's a, a burgeoning field. But let's focus now on the process, how Miro and Tom chose a beachhead market and why that's important. So what were, you know, tell us about how you went about choosing a beachhead market and yep. what some of your considerations yeah. were. So for us, you know, we knew that we were going to be in education and we knew that, you know, blended learning was a really important way to go. There are a ton of aspects of education. It's an enormous space. There's K-12, there's preschool, there's university. You know, where we really picked the focus was on test prep. And then even particularly on a single exam, which is SAT prep. Mm -hmm. And then we can even talk about the very specific kind of person that buys us. But the first choice to pick on test prep um, was a really important decision that we made that had a lot of pros and cons to it as a market. So pros, it's a place in education where people actually pay for results. So people are spending money yep. on it. There's individual customers that you can find. A major yeah. con is that it's a really crowded marketplace. Yeah. The barriers to entry are really low, so it's easy and cheap for us to get in, but yeah. it's easy and cheap for anyone else to get in as well. So a few points about that. First of all, it was a, something that you and Tom had a passion about, and you had some assets. Can you talk about Tom's background and your background about why this yep. was such a good fit? So we actually paid our way through school by doing private tutoring. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was part of how we made our livings and actually had a background in the test prep space in particular and a knowledge of the customer that was really helpful to us. So in mm -hmm. sort of crafting the persona, we'd actually talk to a lot of those people as part of our day-to-day -day job. And part of how we bootstrapped the company at the beginning was by continuing to do private tutoring for students. Mm -hmm. And Tom was actually a teacher as well, Tom, was he not? So Tom had been a so, teacher for a decade before business school. Um, has taught at Duke and a bunch of places. So for him, it's an interesting difference between us. I mean, I think he really thinks of himself as an educator and a teacher, and that that's his full career. Um, I came to it a little bit later in life, but I've, I've got the bug as well. And it was very interesting to see, which we were not going to talk about here, but the teaming of the two of you and how that works so well. Now, you, you brought up the point of it being a strong value proposition because they're looking to go to college. Can you talk about the strong value proposition and the funding that's available? Yep, so again, part of why we picked test prep again is that there are a set of customers in here who are already spending this money. So mm -hmm. you think about, and certainly as we thought about, we thought of, okay, well we could look for markets where people weren't spending any money on this problem. Maybe they didn't recognize that it was a problem. Mm -hmm. Or you could do a place where people are already spending a lot of money and there's a lot of well-funded people looking to solve this problem. Yes. And we ended up going with a market where there's people already spending money to solve this problem in a really clear way. And right. as a result, you know, what we have to do is convince people to use us in lieu of another service, right. which has its own challenges, as opposed to convincing people to maybe use a service that doesn't exist, um, where non-action is the, is the yeah. other option. So it's good. From a beachhead market standpoint, it was something you were passionate about. There, there, there was money there, because yep. they were already spending on other things. The, you, you, uh, you had a strong value proposition, <laughs> and you knew how to get to the, to the customers because you had worked in this market yep. before. The issue that you're focused on is, you know, now from our framework is, you know, what's the competition? What's your competitive yep. advantage? And maybe that's where we should talk a little bit about blended learning, and can you Yep. Say what blended learning is and why that's a competitive advantage. Yeah, so blended learning is a combination and a general term of any sort of combination of people and technology in the learning process. So right. it can be really just broadly applied to anything. In our particular case, what it means is for, think of a private tutoring model where you go and you sit with a private tutor for two hours a week and work on a specific problem. What we bring is a lot of technology to that, mm -hmm. both so you're going to meet with your tutor online, but also so that the work that you're doing, you're not doing in a paper book, you're doing online, and we get a lot of benefits from that. Yeah. We can see what you're doing, how you're getting better, how you're improving. The value proposition for users is that we can actually get just as much results with you with less time with you and the tutor together, but right. just as good educational results, and so right. we can get you a great tutor and charge you much less. 
So, so you have competitive advantage that you, that from your standpoint. Now the question is how do you get the customer to see that, your target customer? And, and can yep. you talk a little bit about that? Because it's not just you understand you're better than the competitor. Yep. It's the perception of the decision maker in this unit, the, the yep. end customer. And so one of our big qualifiers, especially earlier on of customers, is that they have to be willing to experiment. Mm -hmm. um, and this is one of the ways in which, you know, there's some pros and cons. I sort of wish this wasn't the case, and I think over time it will be less so. Um, but for us, you know, our target customer is probably someone that we're connected to in some way mm -hmm. because we're doing something new. Right. So we have a higher level of trust with them. So the fact mm -hmm. that we had already been tutoring and that we had already had an established customer base that we could go to and use them to get referrals to their friends was re was really important part of our target. So in essence, that is your beachhead market where even though your competitive advantage you're comfortable with, it's hard to get them to perceive that. It's the one, the people you already had. Yep, so that relationship of trust. Like I've actually seen a lot of people whose initial target markets are maybe selling to companies that they've worked for before. Right, right. Or places that they already have existing yeah. relationships. Because it's key in a beachhead market to, to find where you have the least amount of risk, where the highest odds of success, because it is a beachhead. Yep. You've got to get that, and then you can keep playing and expand. Um, can you talk a little bit more about your, your beachhead market and how you defined it um, more specifically? It, it's a people you know, but is it a demographic, is it yep. a geography, yep. you know, did you build kind of a, yep. a, a profile? So we thought about this from the qualifier's point of view of what is a qualified person for us to sell to. Mm -hmm. So once we sort of narrowed down to it's going to be test prep and it's going to be SAT prep, there's a couple of qualifiers that fall really quickly out of that. Mm -hmm. So one is that they're, it's a family where the student has to be the right age. Mm -hmm. um, they have to have an ability to pay, so this probably means they're from a community mm -hmm. that is reasonably wealthy. Mm -hmm. They have to be taking the SAT, which means they're going to be from particular parts of the country, so right, probably right. they're likely to be from the coasts. Right. They have to be looking to um, improve their score in order to get into a more competitive school. So that's right. more of a, a psychological dimension right. um, that's harder to identify automatically. But, they but the earlier ones, important. you can actually go out and find zip codes and, yep. and you, you, you've really defined that, but their aspirations is harder for you. But I think you could actually you know, look at that and say, what schools do they apply to yep. and, and the like. And the way we, we actually ended up doing that was via the referrals of people we already knew. Yeah, so that's yeah. sort of how we ended up qualifying yeah. for that process. Yeah, um, And then the final one is currently a qualification that will reduce over time, right. which is they have to be willing to take a risk on a different approach. Mm -hmm. um, and that the way we did that is linked to people who already knew us in some way or were connected to us in some way. We've slowly built out kind of the chain from there. So, so let me just go to one other area, and I think this is important. Um, we could spend all day talking about this. This I is spend, this is. I could spend. <laughs> I, could, I could spend all. I, I do spend all day talking <laughs> about this. It's good. It's good. It's a passion you have. The one thing I would say is that you know we lay out a framework in the 24 steps is what a beachhead is, and one of them says a whole product. And you and I have had this discussion yeah. about you can't sell them a carburetor. You got to sell them the whole car. Yeah. And we've had this, and 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 I, and I want to bring this up because a it's good experience, but also. We've had the discussion, you know, to be a disciplined entrepreneur, you have a framework, but then you look as to how it applies to you. Yep. As Einstein said, seek simplicity, but then distrust it to make sure it fits for yours. Yep. And in your situation, the whole product wasn't the whole story. And can right. you talk so a little bit about that? We started out with an initial product called SAT Habit, as we sort of talked to the market, that was really just, I'll be honest, we thought was the whole product <laughs> and turned out to just be a portion of it. So we yep. had an online um, SAT prep solution. Yeah. Um, that we thought would handle most of it, but really just turned out to be a component uh -huh. of the process. You know, right. So one of the big components that was missing was motivation, mm -hmm. that actually a human helps provide. It's very hard to stay motivated. Interesting, basically. interesting. Um, and so we really- So you were just providing the technology part, you weren't applying the blended at that point. Yep. You were applying the technology, but not the person. And your, the lesson you learned was you need the whole solution. Very much so. And, mm -hmm. it was, and what, what it looked like from our point of view was that for this small group of people, it was unbelievably successful. Right. And we actually then went and talked to those people for who it was really successful for, and we realized it was people who were motivated on their own. Yeah, they yeah. were self-motivated. Right, right. And we said, well, crap, most of the world isn't... <laughs> so buy a set, right? They were going to succeed. Isn't yeah. very self-motivated. So how do we solve that whole problem? And that's yeah. actually how we came to blend learning. So we started with a component which helped us really find out a lot about our market. But you started with, you thought the whole solution, it turns out it was a component, yes. and then, <laughs> as we were talking about before, well, in hindsight, then you would have sold the whole component, and your answer was, 
actually no, we needed to get started and you know and kind of test the hypothesis. Yeah. And I and I think that's a, a really important thing. And then yeah, so I was comfortable and feel comfortable with the fact that we started that way because it gave us such a chance to talk to customers. Right. And right. we still have the situation of I'm still amazed how much we learn every time we talk to a customer. I'm almost disappointed. Yeah. Like we shouldn't <laughs> learn this much every time we talk to a customer. Yeah, yeah. Um, but we do. Um, and so yeah. the chance to just get something that allowed us to work with customers in some way yeah. really helped us, I think, faster figure out what the product was missing. And I think you said an interesting thing. A disciplined entrepreneur doesn't just, you know, take something and then just say, fill in the blanks, you know. They do, they do it like you did, right? A disciplined entrepreneur says, there's a framework, let me use it, and I'm going to use I'm going to have discipline, but discipline doesn't mean just step by step. It's, and, and that it helps you to recognize, oh, I need a whole product, and if something isn't working, the framework is a really helpful way to try and understand what's not working. Yeah. Because there's probably a hole somewhere in your framework that either you ignored yeah. because you were just wanted to, we really, really wanted to ignore it, um, yeah. or you were wrong about some assumption. Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's a helpful way to go back and figure out why isn't this working, it must be that some assumption is wrong. I think right, for right. us that, yeah, that we didn't really have the whole product. Yeah, and this, this aspect of entrepreneurs sometimes deluding themselves, we see frequently, right? And you experience that. So it is both dangerous to delude yourself and I think necessary to delude yourself. <laughs> um, because, what's healthy and what's unhealthy delusion? Um, I wish I knew ahead of time. You know, like, I wish it were obvious ahead of time to know you need to have some delusion to say that these things that are unsolved right now, right, right, right. we're going to figure out in the future. Uh -huh. We're going to have some way to solve them. Yeah. Um, I guess the, um, the unhealthy is where you think you've solved them and you really haven't right, right. to a dramatic degree. The healthy is it's unsolved, but it's okay because I know that it's unsolved. I'm keeping my eye on it. Yeah. And it's just one of the hundreds of problems that lie in our future that we're going to have to solve. Yeah. So one of the things that we think about is, as I always try to, is the, the framework says, here's the things you have to look at. Yes, we want you to be optimistic, mm -hmm. um, but you also have to be a little paranoid to make sure these you, you're hitting all these steps. But you know, if in your case the whole product wasn't quite the perfect approach, you adjust it a little bit. So Mira, I want to thank you very much. This is terrific. I think yep. the students will learn a lot Always from a pleasure. it. pleasure. I'm only upset that you're giving away all of the secrets. Um, <laughs> no, let's come on. <laughs> if we can produce more entrepreneurs, that's the, good for the, the world, world, right? The world, is a, the world is a better place. Yes. Thank all you right, so much. Thank you very much.